This well, conference will oh, now God. be recorded. Make sure I hit record. Oh, yeah. um, okay, so I, I know there's different levels of people who have been, who have not been, um, and I just want to start by saying, kind of give a disclaimer that we may not be able to answer every single one of your questions, but we're going to try our very best to ensure that before you get off this call, you at least feel a little bit more prepared and a little bit more comfortable going to Worlds in a couple okay. of weeks. Some standoffs. Um, I mean, we might have to mute a few Stand people. Off. Some of you guys probably have practice going on behind you, I bet. <laughs> Multitasking, it's so typical. Um, so we've got Jake Simons and Adam Gray, who are um, IQ coaches and have a lot of experience with coaching, with going to Worlds. Um, so they're gonna be able to answer a lot of your questions. We also have David Wolf Bender, who is an REC employee. Um, he is an ESS for REC um, and has a lot of VRC experience. So um, I think we have mostly IQ people on the call, but if you have any questions, um about vrc um david's going to be your guy for that and then um anything that might be more um more related to the actual event itself might be more of um, a david question jake and adam are going to be able to answer a lot of questions about preparing your teams about what to expect what you should bring things like that so um i will stop talking and let whoever wants to jump in um, and start asking questions and then we'll go from there. Can I start with live, or do you want to walk through the submitted questions first? There's two places. Yeah. Uh, no, Let's start to... live because I'm not sure. Well, since we had 67 people sign up, and obviously we're nowhere near that number, um, I'm going to make sure the ones that are on the call get their questions answered. So, um, Lisa, you want to go first? Okay. Okay. You double clicked your. I think you're muted, Lisa. You came unmuted for a half a second. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, can you give me an idea of what like a day actually looks like for the kids? Because on the schedule, it looks like they're in the stadium from 7:30 in the morning to 7 at night. Is that the actual typical day for them? What are you? Are you elementary or are you middle school? Elementary. Okay, so when you arrive on Tuesday, I think the opening ceremonies on that first day for elementary is at one o'clock, right? So when you check in, you'll probably get in around 10 ish, 11 ish, and you'll set up your pits and you'll do inspection and you'll do all those, all those things, get registered. And then opening ceremonies for elementary is, I think, at one o'clock. Is that right? Um, I think it's then, a little bit later, but it's, okay. that's in the zone. So that first day, that first Tuesday, it's really just a lot of housekeeping stuff, setting up your pits. You can get some skills runs in um, after opening ceremonies. And then, yeah, I think you guys are free to go around six-ish is when they kind of close out, right? But then the next day, Wednesday and Thursday, are, are pretty much – all day long, like you're gonna have the the morning, um, whatever they call it, it kind of gets everybody going at like eight-ish, and then you're gonna have matches throughout the day, and there's usually a pretty big gap in between those matches. And then on that last day, I think the your qualification matches finish at lunchtime. That's different this year than it was last year. Um, your Your matches will be over by lunch, and then after lunch will be division finals, and then, of course, the the closing ceremonies and final. So, I mean, you're you're there all day. You are there basically all day long, and it's it, it is exhausting. Like it's like a twelve hour day with a bunch of kids, and there's big big gaps in between your matches. And so, uh, definitely encourage um, you know going around and meeting other teams. And uh, I think Adam's team really does a, a good job with like a scavenger hunt type thing. Doesn't your wife make something like that? It was pretty cool last year. Our kids did it. Um, and just checking out different cultures and collecting, you know, wristbands and all that stuff. But it's really important, though, that, A, they know where your pits are. So they come back. They know, uh, again, like what time their matches are so they're not late. Because I'll, I'll tell you this, a big frustration about the giant building that it is and the temptation to go travel around is that a lot of teams miss their matches and uh, that's no fun. So yeah, you're there. You're there all day. 
Yeah, I'll add something onto that. Um, on on top of the fact that yeah, these days are very long. Um, the facility is very large. Um, so there's a there's a great question that someone had in the pre-submitted questions about things people wish they knew before their first time at Worlds. Um, and I'd say two things on this point. The first one is that it is crucial that students, parents, coaches are all wearing very comfortable walking shoes at Worlds. Um, it is not the time to dress for fashion. Um, and you know, you would think that that would be an obvious thing. Uh, it's not. You will see people uh, who are not wearing good walking shoes. Don't be one of those people. Um, the other thing I would say is um, water. Uh, bring bring water, have water with you all the time. Um, it's an exhausting day. Um, you know, these these days are very long. Um, and on, on top of that too, uh, you would be surprised how much dehydration happens at an event like this. Uh, with so many people around, um, you know, sometimes they can get a little bit hot with so many people in, in the same general vicinity. They've done a better job with air conditioning these past few years. Um, but make sure that you're bringing water for coaches, parents, and students um, before you guys go into the facility, because it is all day. I could add on a little bit to that. Um, if you have any like camping chairs, those are incredibly useful. Um, like full-size bag chairs, I wouldn't necessarily recommend because they take up a lot of space, uh, but there are specific camping ones that are, are meant to break down into much smaller packages. And I, I just carried mine around with me um, because it is a long day and it's a lot of standing and there's really not many chairs. When you say bring water, are we allowed to bring like bottles of water in or do we need to like refillable water bottles? How, what's that? that that's a good question. Um, and, and this actually works as a perfect opportunity for me to offer a slight disclaimer to all of this. Um, I'm speaking in my personal capacity right now, so I'm not speaking on behalf of the RECF uh, in any way, shape, or form. So please don't take anything I say to be the official policy of the REC Foundation. Um, the answer to your question of whether or not you can bring in um, bottled water is no. <laughs> um, and my, my point in saying that is, is that I don't think that um, many people will be stopping you. Um, the the official policy, I believe, of the venue is no. Um, but uh, bottled water. Uh, if it were, for example, I don't know, um, in the bucket where you keep your uh, robot, can't imagine that anyone's really going to be going through that. Um, so um, I think this is one of those instances where the, the benefit might outweigh the cost. <laughs> um, so uh, I would make every attempt to have water with you at all times. And I would um, also kind of ask in that vein, uh, anyone with any um, uh, special requirements, uh, diabetics specifically, bringing in snacks and things? Um, is there somebody that we can reach out to and ask to clear that ahead of time? Or is that just a do what you have to do? And Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I saw that someone had a question about that. Um, I don't know the specific answer for that. Um, but my what I would advise is if there are specific questions that are not answered in the team FAQ uh, part of the VEX Worlds website, which um, I, I do hope everyone will take a look at before they go to Worlds this year. Um, I, if there are specific questions that are not answered, I would I would email the competition email address. I believe I can find that information, but I, I believe it's competition at uh, roboticseducation.com um, because, or maybe support, uh, you could also email support at roboticseducation.org. Um, they uh, they will they will be monitoring that email address from now until through Worlds. So um, that would be a good place to ask those questions. But I would general policy wise, I would stick on the same kind of guideline that um, I don't think people are going to be going through. I mean, there are way too many people going into the venue uh, to be doing you know serious serious conversations around what people are bringing in beyond some really obvious restricted items. So um, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, on that note though, um, you know, we've been talking about getting into the facility. One thing that uh, I forgot to bring up a few minutes ago, um, keep in mind that there are hundreds of teams attending this event. Um, and each team has at least an average of five people per team. Um, my point in saying that is, is that thousands of people will be in this facility. 
and getting in to the facility is going to take a while. Um, this was a problem um, at, at, when Worlds was in Louisville a few years ago. It's still been a thing in Dallas. Traffic is going to be bad. Um, traffic will be bad. Foot traffic will be bad. Plan ahead. Plan on time. Um, because unlike a local event where you might be able to call your event partner and say, hey, can you hold that for us? Uh, Worlds will not be doing that. So um, just be planning ahead with, with travel time. Is the venue layout the same as last year, or did it change? That's a good question, and I was on the call where they were talking about it, and I don't remember um, whether or not it's the exact same. The general format is similar. There are a few changes I know. For example, I know that they have moved either where the practice or skills fields are, but that also might have been specific to VRC. So I would hesitate to, to, to give a definitive answer on that. Um, but so, yeah, I don't know exactly. I think I saw that the elementary pits and the middle school pits were flip-flopped. So from where they were last year. That would not surprise me, um, but I don't know for sure. Either way, I mean, I don't know what the advantage of that was because they're both Bears. equally really far away. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe maybe just trusting the older kids with the robots going up and down stairs, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Okay, another, anybody have another question? How many rounds? Uh, you... We'll go with Lisa first. I was just wondering how many rounds? That's a good question, um, and this this is a uh, a good thing to to bring up for both IQ and VRC. Um, the the rules books, the competition um, game manuals have all been updated to reflect uh, world. So I checked on this um, just to make sure that, that this was still accurate. At the IQ level, there will be ten qualification matches um, in. Uh, in in each of the divisions for each team. So there are 10 divisions. There'll be 10 qualification matches for each team. The top 10 alliances, so 20 teams, the top 20 teams will move on to the final matches in each division. So there will be 20 teams in each of the 10 divisions who move on. And this is There's just a little side note. And then we would have oh, an 11th match. That's what I was going to say. Um, and, and that's because if if there's an odd number of teams in the division, uh, somebody needs yeah. to maybe step up and play one more time. Uh, if that happens, that match will likely have an asterisk on it in Vexvia, and that match will not count towards your personal average if that's your 11th match. Um, but it would be that it would be your alliance partner's 10th match, so it would count for them. I hopped on late, but I have a quick question. Um, I know the badges are new this year. My question was, are spectator badges allowed back in the pits? Like if we have parents that need to help, I have 27 kids coming and I don't want to try to run them all everywhere by myself. <laughs> I double checked on this because I saw that question submitted ahead of time. Um, so there are two, there's a, a, a I guess a multi-pronged badge system. Um, People who are um, with the team, so competitors, I believe coaches, will have badges when they check in, I believe. Um, spectators who are at the facility are asked to do a separate check-in process, um, and they can get a badge that does allow them access to the pits. So um, spectators will have access to the pits, um, and they will have access to the bleachers in the divisions, as always. Uh, I think the real distinguishing factor is that only students are allowed on the competition floor at all times throughout basically the entire event. So um, similar to how some uh, tournaments run, I, don't, I mean, this is more of a VRC thing than an IQ thing, um, but only students can be on the competition floor, I think is really the point of that. There is a there is a good FAQ about that um, online um, that they've just updated. Um, so I'm happy to send a link so you can look at that as well. And that's new this year. That's, that that's been kind of ticketed. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's the. Uh, let me see. It, sa it says it on the on the Q and A. Where is it? That say that. I think the closing ceremonies you have to have a ticket. The opening ceremonies you do not. 
Yeah. Um, I, I did, I saw that as well. And I think, um, they're, they're, the RECF is asking teams who might, if you, for example, if you get more tickets than you have people who are going to go, they're asking that you return those tickets so that there are other teams that might be larger can go get those on a first come first serve basis. Um, they'll probably tell you that when you get to the facility, just wanted to bring that up. Um, yeah, it says, also um, I was going to say, it says uh, spectators when they arrive should go to spectator check-in and lobby D to get their wristbands. This is all new. I mean, it was it was actually kind of confusing. I know there's some questions on the Facebook pages and there are, I mean, answers all over the board. But if you go to the to the frequently asked questions on the uh, roboticseducation.org site, it answers all of that stuff. I think that was updated pretty recently. I also noticed under the maps, there's now a opening and closing ceremony seating chart that might help a little bit too. Um, so you might want to check out the map section there. It looks like they've they've changed the seating a little bit from last year and configured it a little bit differently. I'm assuming to add more seats because um, there it was pretty much standing room only. And those maps are on that same site. I know you said there's 10 divisions and the top 20 teams will move on from each division. How are, are the divisions just randomly drawn or how do the divisions get chosen? Great question. So um, at least in VRC, I'm pretty sure it works the exact same way in IQ. Uh, what they do is they have a list of all the teams and they put them in order in numbers um, and they just send one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and they start over again and they keep on going down that list. So um, they, they do that because they don't want teams from the same organization to be able to be in the same division. Um, it's in order to promote competitiveness. There's an argument about whether or not it does that, but um, the, that, that's generally uh, how they design the division. So they're not at random. Um, they're done based on the order in which your number is. So. Julie, it looks like you're talking. You, it looks like your mic is working, but we can't hear you. Nope. Nope. <laughs> um, I have a question. How many teams will make it to the division finals? So the division finals, um, there will be 20 teams and 10 alliances that will make it for IQ, um, just for clarity, uh, that will make it to the division finals um, in each division. So uh, that means that 10 alliances times 10, there will be 100 alliances across the events that make it to finals. Um, and then, of course, the division champions will go compete in the dome for the overall championship. Julie, do you want to try again, or, or you can even type, type your question in the chat if you want. How many teams total are in the IQ? For which, um, for which, uh, for elementary or for for middle? For elementary. For elementary, I believe the number is just under 800, so I think it's around 750 to 800 um, in total. Um, I could be wrong about that. Um, but that was the last number I heard. Um, for elementary, I believe that we were actually really close, to, or sorry, excuse me, for middle school, I believe we were uh, close to 800 as well. So I think it's a, it's about equal. Um, I can check the specific numbers, but I think that's pretty close to where we are. It looks like elementary is at 759 and middle school is 787. I was so close. You were? <laughs> Uh, ben here. I have two questions. Are multiple teams, if I have multiple teams going, I'm assuming the pits are close together, if not next to each other. And then the second part is where do teams enter the first day, like a specific door? I have looked everywhere and can't find it. So um, I can try and answer. I, Adam and Jake, I don't want to jump in here too much, so please cut me off. Um, uh, my understanding is that you enter through the main door of the facility 
Um, I have not heard different yet. Um, so it would be the main entrance on the first day. Um, as for the pits, unless something has dramatically changed um, since I was both a competitor and since I've been on these calls, um, pits are done in a row based on team number, meaning that uh, organizations that are of the same number uh, will be right next to each other directly. Um, little fun little tip is that uh, if your teams have pits that are you know right next to each other, you can actually take out the middle divider. It actually gives you a surprising amount of additional space. Um, mm -hmm. Probably saw some teams do that at state. Um, historically, Vex has not had a problem with that, so I would recommend it. Um, just gives some more space, but yeah. So we will be allowed to Only take out the slightly. dividers because last year they did not let us take out the posts no, in between, not. and it was a rule. I mean, I would love it because I love my jumbo pit, but um, it, <laughs> I, just a heads up that like your field takes when you bring your field, it does take up one whole pit, and they did not let us remove the bars at K Hutchinson. Ah, I yeah, it was it was okay. really. It was nice at state this year. Thanks, Tech Point, because I think what you guys yes. did is just automatically so remove those of center bars. It was great. Which mm -hmm. was really, really nice. Um, I don't know if they intend to do that or not, but you're right. Last year it was it was kind of a pain because one field does take up an entire pit. So we had, you know, sixteen kids in one pit and a field in another pit and mm -hmm. it was kind of jammed. But I would say try. <laughs> I, I would yeah. try um, in all seriousness. Um, yeah, the, the big concern is that um, th it is very important that event officials can find a team. So what you don't want to be doing is you just want to make sure that your team is in their designed pit. Uh, that's that's the that's kind of rule numero uno. Um, the uh, at uh, when Worlds was back in Louisville, they actually actively encouraged people to be taking out their middle dividers um, because they fall over quite a bit um, and it can cause some problems. But uh, I didn't know that at Dallas, they were being a little bit more strict about that. Uh, I saw Julie put something in the chat. Um, um, yeah, so um, the VRC skills question, Julie, um, I've passed that up the line, um, but I have not heard back on anything of that yet. Um, I would come prepared for that not to be the case, um, but I have not heard different um, quite yet. Um, as for the skills question, um, I was talking about IQ for the for the division split, um, though I have not looked at the VRC one. Um, I know there was talk about them moving a different direction on that. Um, but last I had heard they had not changed that. Um, so I can double check. Um, but I, last I heard they were not splitting up by skill score for VRC. Um, which is too bad because there were some people who were supporting that pathway. Um, but some of us lost the argument. One further thing about pits, um, since your teams are together, if you have multiple teams, it's important to point out that um, some of your teams may have a much, much farther walk to their division than other teams. And it, when I say much, much, I'm, I'm being very serious. It is significantly farther, potentially, like another 200 yards or so, so. Uh, be prepared for that. Make sure you have enough help to make sure that the teams are getting where they're supposed to be on time because uh, that can be a real challenge. Um, in addition, uh, the fields in the uh, fields in the pits, um, if you only have one team, um, one thing that we did, and it may or may not work out with your um, people who are next to you, um, but we actually worked out a system with uh, our neighbors and we just slid it, slid the field like halfway under. Um, one of the bars, and that ended up working out more or less. Um, but I have have a fairly small team size, so it was a little easier for me. Um, if you have a lot more kids, then that may not be um, ideal, but something to consider. Lisa says in the chat, someone mentioned the scavenger hunt. Would you be willing to share? Uh, that would be you, Adam, or Jen. 
think I don't know if you guys Ed, created one yet. Jen, do you want to post that, or do you want me to post that? I can post it, I guess. Make sure it's shareable. Recommendations on how to feed my team of nine kids and eleven adults. Good place to go. Eh, it's funny that you asked that. So we have ninety kids going and almost three hundred adults, three hundred adults and family members going. Um, that's been a honestly the biggest challenge for us. Last year we just catered in the hotel that we were staying in. We just brought in Chipotle and Chick Fil A and pizza. This year the hotel we're staying in uh, does not allow outside food. And just a side note here, I was just talking to Adam about this. And you don't have to actually guess, but how much do you think it costs to rent out a hotel room for four evenings and using their catering? Jamie knows. $24,000 in case anyone was wondering. Uh, so what we're doing is we're giving every kid um, a like a Visa gift card preloaded and they can just use it with their families however they want just to kind of help offset the cost. Um, so I don't know, I don't, I can't answer the question as far as like, what's a good place to eat food at the convention center is very expensive. Um, but I'm sure there are plenty of places downtown Dallas that, that, uh, that you can get food at. I was going to chime in that we did a grocery pickup at the Tom Thumb grocery store and they do pre-made sub trays and they do fried chicken. And then we also did pizza. So I can feed, I have like 75 people, not as many as Jake, but with parents, maybe close, close to 75 to hundred people. And so we just do a big grocery order each day, eat it outside. And I have a parent that drives down or has a car rental and they go pick up our food and we just pay for it that way. So it's a little bit cheaper way, but then we can just feed the masses and I have moms in charge of like plating up the food, so. I'm also uh, Amber. putting a link in here um, for an additional option. It's something that we did last year that um, it depends on what your needs are, um, but it, it worked out for us on occasion. Um, but there is a company that does um, catering and will deliver box lunches. And that was um, a little more reasonable. Um, you could email the email that I put in the, in the link to get the info for that. Um, but I think they're like um, $12 a, a box lunch. Um, and then there's like a flat delivery fee for, it doesn't matter how many boxes you've got. It's like 10 bucks or something. So that's an, another option as well. I think somebody, I think I saw somebody ask about skills area. I was just looking at the map. It could be wrong, but it looks like on the map there are skills on both levels. Does that sound right, David? Um, I had assume? heard, so I had heard um, that the only thing I had heard for VRC was that, and I assume this will be the same in both, but don't, you know, I, I may have misunderstood this, that the skills area now is where um, the meal area used to be. Um, and so I'm unaware whether or not that means that they're on both floors <laughs> or like, I know there's a huge practice uh, field area um, mm -hmm. and I'm not exactly sure what their plan is yet. Um, so I can't tell, I, I see where you're looking. I just can't tell um, between the two. Okay. Um, yeah. It was last year, it was on the third floor, like way away from everything else. Um, and so no, again, I don't see yeah. a level three map at all. So it makes, unless I'm missing it, I don't, I only see a level one and level two. Yeah. Oh, I see a level three. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't tell. But regardless, last year it was on the third floor and it was far away. And so again, it's very important to have your kids map out like, you know, big gaps. If they have a big gap, this is a good time for skills. If they don't have a big gap, don't go to skills. Skills line is oftentimes pretty long as well. And so um, you don't want to be waiting in a long line far away from your pits slash your division um, to miss your match.
I asked the skills question and I think I found it on the map. It's level two outside the C hall. So it looks like educators are on the third floor this year. So I did, I had to scour the map a little. Yeah, there's a if lot. I'm looking at, if, I, if I'm looking at the right part of the map and the correct map. <laughs> it, it definitely says skills there. Oh uh, yeah, I see it. Uh -huh. But I also saw on level one. Oh, never mind. I, I, need, I need to zoom, zoom in. I didn't zoom in. It was an S and I thought it was skills, but it's actually something else. It's probably staff. I think it's staff. Yeah. Well, that'll be nice. That'll yeah, be a lot closer. Be Actually, I think that's where the staff ate last year. I think that looks like the staff eating place. Ooh, that's a, that reminded me of something before we go to another question. Um, yeah. The uh, there's at some point uh, in the past, a lot of teams have uh, skipped the drivers meeting um, that happens, I believe, in your divisions. But check me on that um, with the referees. Um, I would beg um, you and all of your teams to be sure that you go to those drivers meetings. Um, all of the referees have a meeting together um, at Worlds where they discuss some of the more, um, I guess, complicated rules questions that might be up to interpretation. Those will be settled at the drivers meeting. Um, so there have been a few rules questions I've seen, particularly, um, I haven't seen a ton with IQ, although there have been a couple with, you know, what becomes a score affecting violation. Um, in VRC, for anyone who's here for VRC, uh, a lot of questions about what happens if you pick up a fourth disc. All of those kinds of questions can be addressed at the driver's meeting, and they probably will be, so please go. Um, yes, I don't remember if the driver's meeting is all together or if it's by division, so uh, I is, haven't. It is by division. By division, yeah. So that's actually that's great because it gives a great opportunity to ask questions to the head referees. Um, this, I think, is probably the best group of head referees Vex World has ever had. So um, that's really great. Um, but yeah, that's all I got to say on that. Just wanted to make sure I get that in. Anything else while you guys have? I, I, it's me again. I just put in the chat. I didn't know if Project mm -hmm. Lead the Way was doing anything. I, I may have said it earlier, but like I know they've done a meal in the past. Is there anything that they're offering for teams at Worlds this year? Um, and what might that be? I haven't heard anything about it. Is no, they've got a yeah. booth, and that's about it. That's what I heard too. At least on Project Lead the Way. My mom works for Project Lead the Way, so I, <laughs> I sometimes I just hear things. Quick question, question. about, yeah, um, people who um, offered to volunteer but haven't heard anything yet. Do we know anything about that? Um, what, uh, just to get more, a little bit more specific, what did you uh, offer to volunteer for? I didn't, my husband and my daughter did. My husband offered to be a referee for skills, I think, and my daughter offered to be a resetter. Okay. Um, hmm. Let me think. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> one thought would be to email the support email. Um, they might be able to help. Um, the conference email might be able to help. Um, you can also, if you send me an email, I can connect you with the person. Uh, so if you, I can put my email in the chat if that'd be helpful, um, and I can try and get it passed on to somebody who is directly involved in that. That's probably the best I can do. So you guys, what time do you go out? I signed up to volunteer too, and I also haven't heard anything. I'm hoping they'll send something out next week. 
Uh, Chase, did you have a question? Yeah, I know in, in other competitions we've been at where they have a um, expected time where their your competition would be, but a lot of times they either run ahead of schedule or behind schedule. Like how close how close are they normally to those? You know, if we have a couple hour gaps, is it okay to leave off campus to get some food, or should we stick around? Like how does that normally look? So historically, it has been kept very close to the schedule. Um, they will wait, typically, um, until scheduled times before they move on. It's not a hard and fast rule, but um, in my experience, they've been, uh, at least this last year, um, much more willing and trying to stick to the actual posted schedule. Um, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, there there was guidance uh, released to the division managers a few weeks ago about how to handle schedule. Um, it's not going to be as big of a thing for IQ, but it's going to be a big deal for VRC because um, VRC's reset time is outrageous just with the nature of the game. Um, so I would assume that uh, I mean, if the, if divisions can run ahead, they are allowed to run ahead. Um, so. I would stay very focused to vex via about where they are in the schedule. Uh, what I do know is, is that they will not like, for example, if there's a lunch hour, if you have no match before uh, you finish your last match before lunch, for example, they will not start the match after lunch early. Um, so that, that that's been put out as like, can't do that. So um, I would, but I would be careful about leaving campus between matches. Um, if it's like, a close call if that makes sense because they, they they can run ahead um but as adam said they're they're gonna try not to um but if students are ready at the field uh it's rare to make them wait so um so yeah and they definitely by the way will not if they're running behind they definitely will not wait um so um be watching for sure you know uh adam or jake brought this up earlier the distance between the pits and the um competition floor very very far right so um i would encourage all students to be carrying for example an extra battery with them in case there's a tight uh tight match schedule um usually the um the distances between matches between times is not is, is pretty large at worlds uh, relative to a local event um but i would still i i would carry an extra battery uh ev everyone on my team when i was competing had an extra battery at worlds on them so um you know i'd have backups for backups for backups ready to go Do we need to bring our own extension cords and all of that, or how are those pits set up as far as cords and what's available? There will be a a power drop at every pit, um, but it's not clear. And Adam and Jake, I, I haven't been to Dallas, so if, if you want to expand on this, um, I don't know exactly how many... Um, how many outlets there will be so my recommendation is to bring a power strip um and maybe if you if you guys want an extension cord i think you can be happy to bring one um but i don't think you're going to need one to run from like all the way down the pits for example you'll have a power drop in your pits it's just getting more outlets um like a 15 foot extension cord is almost overkill for it and then like you said a, a power strip of some kind is is useful uh, usually those are like four game boxes, um, so there'll be four plugs um, per box, but then you're also sharing with the people not only next to you, but on the other side of the pit as well. Um, but if I remember correctly from last year, I don't think we had any trouble with finding power. It, 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 yeah, power shouldn't, power shouldn't be a problem is what I've heard. Yeah. Um, Hey, I just found, by the way, just in the on the on the page, pipe and drape framework. Just going back to what we we're talking about earlier, teams may not disassemble the pipe and drape framework or draping Darn. fabric. So that stinks. 
Uh, but to go into, I guess, segue into the next question, how big is a booth space for one team? It's 10 by 10 and it includes a table in it. So it's enough space for a table or sorry, for a, a field for you to bring a field, but it does get pretty tight. That's why it was nice when we could tear apart the, uh, the pipes and stuff and combine pits. Do most teams bring their fields? I, I wouldn't say most teams. I would say probably 50, 50. Um, we, t you know, we're taking four teams at my school specifically, and we've got other schools in our district that are going as well. And I think we're taking one or two fields per team or sorry, per, um, pair of teams. So two fields, 50, per team. 50. got it. <laughs> two fields per team. Yeah. One thing to keep in mind is that um, there have been uh, this. This was definitely true when I was competing. I don't know if Dallas has been as strict about it, but um, extending out of the pit is a pretty big problem, um, or it has been in the past. So, particularly for the VRC people who might be on the call or might be watching this later, your pits are larger, or your fields are larger than the pit. So, um, keep that in mind. You also want space to sit. So there are quite a lot of practice fields and are we still doing the uh, practice field like time limit rotations like we did last year? Do we know that? I heard yes, but um, the standard has usually been that they'll do the 10 minute timer once there's a line. Um, so okay. I don't know, uh, but I, I've also only been in the VRC meetings, so. So to be clear for people who weren't there last year, um, there was a 10 minute timer and then they just rotated everyone off of the fields. And then the next people that were waiting in line onto the fields every 10 minutes. Um, that seemed to work out pretty well. There's a, a question in the chat. Um, there are a couple questions in the chat. Um, one of them asks, is it possible to, uh, to be uh, finished competing um, on the on the first day. Um, I'm pretty sure for for all levels. Doubt it. Um, yeah, for all levels, there are qualification matches on on the on two day across two days. So um, you'll you'll certainly play all of your qualification matches. The question is whether or not for that one afternoon where they do the eliminations or the finals, whether or not you'll be competing there. Um, Adam, Jake, I have that right, I think. But yeah, it sounds right. Um, I want to say we had probably, what, seven matches the first day last year, thereabouts. And depending on where, where the cutoff is, you may it might not be everybody has seven, but um, it was right around there. So we only had, you know, three or four matches remaining the next day. And that's, that'll be especially true if we're definitely finishing before lunch. Yeah. Somebody asked, uh, when are the schedules published so we know when our matches are? And it, a while ago, a long time ago, they used to publish them like a week or two in advance, which was pretty cool because you could find out the team number, get their contact information, zoom in, have your kids zoom in with their kids and do like virtual you know, practice runs, which was really cool. Um, but obviously, you know, if a team doesn't show up or has issues getting there, then they have to rerun the match schedule and all that. So I think typically we'll get it. Um, I feel like last year after the first day, um, after opening ceremonies and all of that was over, we had done a couple skills runs and set up our, our pits and we were on our charter bus heading back to the hotel when people started freaking out about Vex via being updated with our match list. So you'll probably get it towards the end of that first day, um, obviously before the first day of matches. And I would say um, just as um, division manager at Worlds, it's, we don't really print uh, match schedules for everybody. So you really need to make sure you have the Vex via app downloaded um, and ready to go because you won't get a paper copy when you're at Worlds. How good is the uh, Wi-Fi? Is there available Wi-Fi for everyone and how good and fast is it? 
I do not remember there being Wi-Fi available, um, but my cell service, I was on AT&T, and it was pretty fantastic. Um, it's way better than here at my house. So Yeah, and I'm Verizon, and I much. had zero issues with my cell service. But yeah, no, no Wi-Fi. So if you yeah, need no. Wi-Fi, you want to bring a hotspot or use a mobile hotspot on your phone. But yeah, we had zero issues with cell service. Keep that in mind too, for teams that use any kind of web-based programming, um, that that does have an effect. Um, so yeah, there's no public Wi-Fi because it interferes with um, all the fun stuff that Jamie will be doing as a division manager. So uh, we want to let Jamie do her job and keep everyone else off Facebook. Appreciate that. Do you happen to know if there will be any more pit displays this year than there were last year? I've not heard anything on that. Um, so I don't know. Sorry. Just curious. Imagine it's pretty difficult with 10 different divisions going at the same time. So. Back when it was in Louisville, they used to have this huge display where they would have every division would have its, you know, it's awesome, like pit display going at the same time. Uh, but I think those days are probably over. Um, so I, yeah, I, I would stick to Via. Do you know when they're gonna? Do you know when they're gonna update the um, Rec Foundation app so that we can actually see the stuff going on with Worlds? Are you talking about the, the Vex Worlds app? Yeah, that that it's the I think it comes up as the REC REC app. REC F app. Let's see if I have anything on that. Give me one quick second. Because they had it last year and it shows you it has maps of the venues, it keeps the division lists. A lot of stuff is in there. They're they're definitely doing it. The question is when will it update? Um, let me look and see if I have that in my, on the presentation that was shared with me. Um, no. Hmm. Sorry, this is taking me a minute. That's okay, because I just looked at the app earlier and noticed that it still only shows 2022. And if you look on line, it tells you, if you look on all the stuff for Worlds, it tells you that eventually that they, you know, come back soon to see, you know, the app. Because I'm just wondering when is soon. <laughs> yeah. Because usually by now, it's, it's at least there. It may not have all the information, but it's at least got, it's at least there. Yeah, it's. It's a valid question. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a great answer. Um, the the thing on the what I see on on my screen on the thing that was shared with me is that the marketing department is handling uh, working on the world website and the and the app management. That's the extent of what I know. Um, so my guess is is that uh, I my hope would be any minute now uh, or any day now, but I can't make any promises. Um, something that maybe not everyone is thinking of um, is the inspection checklist that they're encouraging you to print it ahead of time and bring your own to, to expedite the time frame. So I'm assuming they'll have them on hand as well, but it sounds like if you bring it with you, that might expedite the process a little bit. We actually had a question about that because we were reading it today and we got a little confused because it almost sounded like the coach was supposed to fill out all the checks and things. So is there actually an inspection when we get there or we're just bringing our own inspection checklist and turning it in? There is still an inspection when you get there, the measuring and all of that. Um, all of, you can, if correct if I'm wrong, David, but this is how it happened last year where they could do check off other things and then when they actually physically came up with their robot, then we would ask them the questions again just to confirm and then measure the robot. 
yeah it it's a, yeah, that's kind of the standard process uh for worlds the um only thing i would add is and um i i know there aren't very many vrc people on the call but i know it's being recorded um is that uh the vrc inspection at worlds is typically takes longer than what you would find at a local event it typically takes longer than what you find at state they go a little bit more in detail uh with the vrc students so um just be prepared for that but that what jamie's described as the process is what i've heard as well that's good to know because jenna i, I was reading that too the other day and it sounded exactly like coaches will do everything i mean it was adam correct me if i'm wrong we talked about this it sounded like the coaches are literally going through the entire process. And I was like, oh, that seems a little possibly sketchy. That was what I got out of it, especially when it also had the line after it that like there may be an increased amount of random inspections right. throughout the event. Yeah, they made it sound like coaches are responsible to get your teams inspected and then they would be coming around to your pits if need be. Yeah, that's how we took it. And we were like, that's kind of strange, but okay, we'll go with it. It's, it yeah, says it, you'll provide a completed inspection sheet and inspectors will conduct an abbreviated review to verify robot size, number of motors, and firmware version. Um, for which, which, which and I, we sizing yeah. tools. And at the IQ level, those are basically the only three things that anyone can really cheat with anyway. So um, it, at the VRC level to be a little bit more involved. Um, so you can expect longer questions uh, about modification, about uh, plexiglass, like those kind of things will come up. But the IQ level, it's sizing, number of motors, firmware, have a good tournament. So do all we have teams to know for sure if there are no surprise firmware updates between now and then so that we don't have to mess with that? That's above my already very low pay grade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, I I would love it if I do that. But no, I don't. Are there additional interviews now for every single team when we get to Worlds? Or is it based off how your initial went? Or how does the interview process with Worlds go? I'm not 100% sure. Um, I can... Uh, I can check and see what i have give me one quick second looks like andrea has the exact same question my understanding Thanks. is um if you scored well on your initial zoom interview um and they liked you they'll come back and give you another interview um that, i don't know correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like you know that that's kind of the weeding process and then um at Worlds in person, that's when they kind of whittle it down to the teams that they think are are um, worthy of an award. As soon as we got there, the very first day, as soon as we got there, I had, I mean, we we drove through the night on a charter bus and we had kids exhausted. We had three judge wait, judges waiting at our pits and they interviewed for about 35 minutes with them. Um, so that's another reason, by the way, to tell your kids Typically what we do on that very first day is we allow kids to go out and explore. And then, you know, the second and third day, it's kind of like, all right, this is, this is game time. So let's kind of stick around our pits as best as we can. But even on that first day, they'll come and, and interview you. So just kind of have to be aware. Yeah. And that that's correct. That They'll do follow-up interviews um, with specific teams. So the on-site judging staff will be smaller than it has been at past events, so uh, or at past World Championships. So um, that's the exact right process. The other thing I saw, um, all judging interviews at Worlds will be done in the pits. Um, so uh, it's important that you are, you know, checking in with your pit every now and then, because um, they'll leave a note, is my guess, if they if they missed you. Um, the uh, other things I saw on here, um, this is more of a VRC thing. It doesn't happen a lot in Indiana anymore. We've kind of tried to weed this out, but um, judging interviews are not allowed to have a slideshow presentation accompanying them. So um, it's you and the robot, have fun. 
Um, and then I noticed a lot of people were talking about um, Worlds um, interviews on Zoom. Questions about that um, can be emailed to judging at roboticseducation.org. Um, there, it's a. I, I was helping with the with doing some of those interviews. It's a very complicated process. Um, so. Uh, they're the ones who can kind of help you through that. They've been really good about responding to, to emails, from what I understand, so um, or getting things scheduled. So I would head that way for anything you need in that respect. Yeah, I can send the email. Give me one second. Uh, I've got it. And I do know they're being more flexible because of spring breaks. I think there's been some scheduling conflicts. Um, and so I, from what I've heard, at least, and this is not like from them, but this is what I've heard from other coaches is they're being pretty flexible. Um, knowing that there's a lot of scheduling conflicts with spring breaks. Okay, we're in our last three minutes. Um, I know Jake had to go because he's got um, to be at a robotics, <laughs> of course, um, thing at his school. But last last chance for any last minute questions in the last three minutes. While, while people were, were still talking, by the way, if you didn't get an interview, I'd still email them and see if, they, if there's anything they can do. Um, that's one. Two, um, you know, we kind of joke a lot about how uh, competitive Indiana is. It's a really competitive region. So congratulations to everyone who made it. Seriously, this is like a big deal. Uh, Indiana will have a huge contingent at Worlds this year. Um, while people are still thinking of questions, the last thing I wanted to say is I would encourage all coaches and parents um, to really try and find fun things to do outside of the competition time. Um, you know, when I think back to a lot of the best memories I had from middle uh, and high school, it came from fun extracurricular things we did when Worlds was not going on. Um, so I would try and find those kind of things. Um, there's a lot to do in Dallas. I'd take advantage of it because um, those can really be some outstanding uh, memory creators. Um, but that's that's all I have on that. That's great advice. All right. Well, like I'll just echo and say what David said. We're so thrilled to have such a great representation. Um, I think I, I'm going to say this with complete confidence that Indiana will have more teams represented at the world competition than any other state or country. So I think um, we can we can be very proud of that. And I let's I think it's important for us to show that um, Indiana is both kind and competitive so good luck to everybody and we'll see you there um, i know tech point foundation for youth will be in innovate and then also in design so hopefully we'll see some friendly familiar faces while we're there and if you have any well, questions take some swag now, by. Then, what was that adam i say so take some swag by because they can't get away to go get it themselves yes appreciate that i love getting swag from your kids it's one of my favorite one of the highlights yeah, Andy and I had like a whole collection last year thing. And we're, Indiana is hoping to get you some of your own swag. So we're still working on it. Um, we're not guaranteeing it, but we're trying really hard to get some really special um, Indiana hats for all Indiana teams. So be on the lookout for that. All right. Good luck, you guys. And see you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good luck, everybody. Good luck. Enjoy it. Thanks, Adam and David. Thank you so much, Jamie. Have a great time at Worlds. Thanks. I, 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 wish I, could... I wish you could go too. <laughs> Maybe next year. I have to stop by and listen to Andy's commentating. You really do. It's It's something special. It's top notch to like get some of those teams that I can't pronounce what their name is, and it's just it gets bad from there.
So I need to change my team names. Is what you're That's saying. right. Keep it simple. Give me, I start just reading the numbers after a while. Because some of these kids, they come up with the most creative, I'm sure they're in reference to things, but I just have no idea how to pronounce half of them. Ours are pretty simple. So, all right. Well, thanks again. Appreciate it. See you in a couple weeks. Thank you, Adam. Yep.